going on, Jerome? So we're recording the Vikings news dump right, right at the start of the Wolves Mavericks game. So I, I don't know how I'm supposed to feel on this beautiful Thursday morning. But either way, it's a good day. Sun is shining, birds are chirping and stuff, and it's time for another Vikings news dump. He sees you when you're pooping. So uh, at the Wolves game was uh, the Vikings version of Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns where Justin Friggin Jefferson and Jordan Addison looking good. Got the custom jersey. It's pretty fantastic. Also, y- y- you know it's a big-time game when Jefferson can't get courtside seats. <laughs> Uh, it's all right. The extension is coming through and he'll be perfectly fine. Like I feel like once Jefferson gets his extension and he's the highest paid non quarterback in NFL history, he should just be able to sit on the bench. I think that's what's going to happen, man. But, uh, it was love to see, uh, Minnesota sports support and other Minnesota sports. Uh, and today was an off day. Uh, well, yesterday was an off day for the Vikings at OTAs. They're back at today. So good, good times. Also good times. So, uh, Vikings put out a video, you know, asking Anthony Edwards, like, Hey, Wolves in four, wolves in five, wolves in six, wolves in seven. Anthony Edwards, I I, I need the shoes, and I I've, I've been waiting for the Anthony Edwards Adidas ones in the Georgia clay color. Uh, first quarter action. Ooh, Jay McDaniel's. Let's go, let's go, man. Uh, so just been waiting for it, right? And I I feel like this is a great look. I feel like this has a lot of meme capability. Th- this is a lot of possibilities here. I need them. I need Jordan Addison to get the rock. I need Keenan Cardle to become OC. I, I need Keenan Cardle to become an NFL head coach. You know, a lot of things, man. Also, I need those Anthony Edwards shoes, man. Come on. Come on. Something I also need is one of these Jabrones to step up at quarterback this year. Now, we, we've gone through the best-case scenarios, right? Darnold is the guy, and he starts all year, not because McCarthy isn't ready, but because Darnold is that mf and he pans out on that – uh, that potential that made him the number three overall pick in 2018. And he just integrates beautifully with what Ken O'Connell wants to do. And I actually have a lot of faith uh, in both of these quarterbacks because now obviously this could be a bit, a little bit of revisionist history, but in terms of value and free agency, would I rather pay 10 million bucks for Darnold on one year or 180 million with hundred million guaranteed for four years for Kurt? Mm, I don't know, man. Also with McCarthy, would I've rather traded up three ones and change to go get Drake May or sitting and making a small trade up to get McCarthy at ten? It's pretty close, but either way, love the one you're with. Uh, I love me some JJ McCarthy. I think that he's going to do great things with this Kevin O'Connell scheme long term. But uh, I also do think that he would benefit from sitting for a full season. And if Darnold is that dude who can supply that breathing room and allow uh, McCarthy essentially a redshirt season, everything would be beautiful, man. Uh, also, the other best case scenario is uh, McCarthy just ready to rock and roll out of the gate, and he has a CJ Stroud type season. All that. Mm. Speaking of Kirk Cousins, so you know, a lot of people are wondering what's going on with the tampering. How come the NFL was dragging their feet, even though Kurt admitted that there was tampering going on there, uh, as well as like, oh, there's not going to be decision, decision reached before the draft, blah blah blah. And what we said at the time is that I think that the league just wants people to forget about it. And the draft has come and gone. Free agency is way in the rearview mirror. Everyone's sort of on summer vacation now. And then eventually they'll just be like, yeah, there's no tampering. There's no tampering. Now, I'm not even saying that the Vikings should get draft pick compensation from the Falcons, which probably not. But I feel like they should be punished in some fashion. They, they lose some draft picks. They, they get a heavy fine. They, they do whatever. Because obviously, if what Kurt says, what they did happen – Obviously, it's over the line because otherwise, before the start of the new league year, how come teams aren't meeting with every single free agent, especially with ones with medicals? But long story longer, Purple Persuasion put this together. Uh, per my Florio, not a thermos, uh, PFT, uh, he believes the NFL could look the other way regarding the Falcons tampering of former Vikings quarterback Kurt Cousins because of Falcon CEO Rich McKay being the NFL chair of the com- competition committee and the connections he has high up within the NFL. Now, first off, when when I remember that McKay was on, was the head of the uh, competition committee, it's just like that that that's like uh, the, the opposite of competition. That, that's definitely a little bit of a uh, probably should recuse yourself from this one, man. Hmm. Quote: If the NFL is determined to look the other way, they will. Whether it's Rich McKay has plenty of juice at 345 Park Avenue because he's chair of the competition committee, whatever it may be. Uh, this is the problem with having inconsistency in how you address violations of the rules. Uh, but Rich McKay. Uh, has friends in high places, uh, and they find a way to look the other way, and you know the consequences are going to be as good uh, as the investigation. What kind of investigation did they do? So 
what's really going to annoy me, so the, there is an ongoing investigation as well of Saquon being tampered with by the Eagles. Now, if if the Eagles get hammered, but the Falcons just walk, when I, I feel like the evidence for Kurt, uh, literally him admitting it, smoking gun at his press conference, uh, the, the, then some something stinks in Denmark. But either way, like I'm not holding my breath that the Vikings are gonna like get some draft picks uh, or anything out of the Falcons, but it, it is what it is. Also, great. <laughs> uh, so this is fantastic. Hold up, wait. Um. All right, so Kyrie Jackson. Kyrie Jackson is already just like. A hilarious content machine I, I love a man so uh, he put out a photo of uh fellow rookie cornerback Dwight McLaughlin uh take a little nap little, little napski uh, after some work now th- there is a thing where people can sleep with their eyes open right and it's not just like the sleep with one eye open th- that sort of thing no it's like people some people just do or sometimes it's people that had like a traumatic experience and I don't know like not getting into the weeds I'm not a medical professional but so Dwight McLaughlin doesn't sleep. He just waits. Or th- this is the, the haters that are sleeping on uh, the Vikings this year. Just like, I don't know. But that would be so weird, wouldn't it? Also, well, like, do you blink when you sleep with your eyes open? Or do your eyes just, like, dry out in the middle of the night? Like, you got to make sure you take your contacts out. Well, for obvious reasons. But if say, say you take a nap. Say you're, like, in a car ride and you got your contacts in and you're just, like, zonk out. Like, are they cement? Like, when you wake up? Are you like I'm blind, Lordy, I'm blind. It's like it's like the the Jason Momoa C show. I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> like it's like, Kyrie Jackson, like Kyrie Jackson's literally had two days of formal practice with the team, and he's already just like batting a thousand in terms of hilariousness on socials. Uh, hopefully, he can back it up uh, on the field, man. Mm. So we got back up on uh, the field. So Pro Football Focus. Uh, frenemies of the Vikings. They, they put out you know top three players uh, for every team uh, heading into the 2024 season, and they picked Jefferson, Hawkinson, and Derisaw, and blah, 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 blah. Now, also consider Brian O'Neill. So, J.J., obvious. Derisaw, yes. Would it be too bold to say Darnold? I mean, I, I, I guess, but I, I feel like, especially with Hawkinson up on blocks, probably starting out on the pup list, it's like, maybe, maybe not. Or could you have gone with Say Ivan Pace Jr. Could you have gone with uh, Jonathan Grenard? Could you have gone with Josh Metellus? I mean, Josh Metellus rated out favorably last year, uh, and frankly should have been a Pro Bowler. Was a straw that stirred the drink on, on defense. Uh, so yeah, even though I love and adore Hawkinson, uh, the fact that he is dinged up, mm, I probably would have gone Je- because they're just not going sh- by straight PFF grades. Like they're talking about like weighted importance. So I think I would have gone Jefferson Derisa. And Grenard. It would have been close. I, I think Pace and Metellus would have been my 4-5. So, uh, there you go. Also, speaking of 2-5, actually 2-6. Uh, so, in 2026, the NFL draft is headed to Pittsburgh. So, so I, I initially was a curmudgeon about them moving the draft because I feel like Radio City Music Hall, the place had all the history. And, you know, it's New York. Uh, it was a big-time deal for the draft. But moving it around... It's kind of awesome because it is like uh, like a roving music festival of uh, except the music there, there is no music all it is just uh, dudes reading out names, which is hilarious and like seven hundred thousand people descended upon Detroit. There's a half a million in Nashville uh, previously. Uh, Green Bay next year. I don't know where all the people are going to stay. I mean, there's like two hotels in Green Bay, Appleton, whatever. But Pittsburgh's a great city. Uh, and I, so I, I love any city where everything is centrally lo- located, uh, especially the sports stadiums, because it, it is kind of a, a, a D-dragger when everything is downtown except the stadiums like out in the burbs. Right? So it, it's like Minneapolis is set up great. Uh, I think Minneapolis, Indianapolis, New Orleans, Detroit, Pittsburgh is up there too. Like anything in Central located. Where if the Vikings had built an Arden Hills, nah, 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 nah. Uh, but Pittsburgh is a great city. And of course, you got Permanti Brothers, world famous. Um, so basically, you take two thick ass slices of bread. Uh, you, get, you got your deli sandwich or hot sandwich, whatever you want. You put the fries, you put the slaw, you put the tomatoes on there. It's really good. It is really fantastic, man. Uh, also, PNC Park. 
It's pr- so I'm a big fan of Target Field. Uh, but PNC is definitely one of the best, if not the best, uh, parks up there. Like, you go Petco, you can go with the Giant Stadium, too. Um, but, I mean, it's pretty good. Like, I, I feel like any Major League Baseball stadium that doesn't include the skyline, if applicable, applicable in the city, I feel like that's just a waste. That, that's just really stupid. Also, it... Seeing this and seeing Target Field just makes me pissed off that the uh, that the Twins played in the Metrodome for so many years. It's just like it's summer, man. I mean, there, there's like six nice weeks here in the great state of Minnesota. How how are we just wasted it inside, just getting blown out the doors at, at Metrodome. Come on, man. Also, come on. So Roger Goodell and the league pushing for the 18 game season. Now they can't implement it till the end of the new CBA, but it's coming because first off, 17 games is just odd. But 18 games, so it's hard to say with a straight face that you're concerned about player safety. It's like, they can't have a third helmet because we're concerned about player safety. Here, play 18 games, and the Chiefs play three games in 10 or 11 days. And also play more Thursday night football and Fridays. Hmm. Uh, But uh, Goodell said this, less preseason games and more regular season games, I think uh, most anybody would think that is beneficial. Now, I I mean, sure, people generally dislike the preseason, but also – Preseason is important for fringe roster guys. You know, guys trying on the second and third teams, trying to make an impression, trying to get that done. Uh, and you could say, sure, you can prove yourself in practice, except practice ain't a game situation. And uh, practice reps aren't divvied up the same. And if you can get some run in a preseason game under the lights, putting up good action in, in a game situation, I mean, that could make you golden. Right? And it, it, it does really suck that they're just taking that away from uh, some of these players uh, just in the name. Well, first off, salary is going to skyrocket. Like People are going to get so pissed when there's a $100 million a year quarterback in the next couple of seasons. Like, once they go 18 games, once they have more international games, once they're streaming more, like people are, are really going to get pissed. But it is what it is. The business is the business. Uh, speaking of more international games, <laughs> Ari Mario, my sports update, Australia – Australia, put another shrimp on the barbie, is uh, among the sites the NFL is seriously considering as a possible future host of an international game. This could ha- That could happen as early as 2025, uh, but the logistics are complex and the league is still looking into it. Now, well, number one, the thing that makes it complex is that no one in Australia gives two hoots about the NFL. Everything is Aussie rules football. Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. Also, there's, there's like two people that live in Australia, by the way, and they're all along the coasts. So... Uh, no. And also number two, spiders. All, everything in Australia is huge and it wants to kill you. Like, think of think of all the wild animals. Think of all the wild bugs and insects in America. And then put them on steroids. Put them on gear for like two years. Just let them train. Rocky Montage style. And then put your ass out in the desert or put you near water that uh, has sharks and jellyfish in it, uh, and then just go at it. That's Australia. It's ridiculous, man. But uh, whatever. Grow, grow the game. Sure. Sure. Uh, lastly, so Buffalo Wild Wings taking a page from the Red Lobster playbook. Like, hey, let's bankrupt ourselves. So they're offering a all-you-can-eat wings and fries deal for a limited time. Now, first off, this picture is misleading because when, when I first saw this, like wings, all-you-can-eat, just taking me back to like college days. Come on. What, do you remember like when chicken wings at the dive bar were like 10, 15 cents a piece? Those were the days, man. Those were fantastic. Uh, and also like that, you can tell like that fryer grease hasn't been changed out for weeks, but also you did not care because you are poor and it happens. Uh, but so it, it's boneless wings. Now I, I, I'm not like a big, well, boneless wings aren't wings person, but I mean, technically they aren't. I mean, they're, they're chunks of breast meat. Like, they're basically chicken nuggets, right? But uh, I'm, I'm not going to throw someone under the bus for eating boneless wings. Uh, you, you want what you want. Sometimes uh, some people don't like the deliciousness and the flavor from the bones, or they don't want to deal with, like, the sinew and tendons, or say it's like it, it's a it's a power business lunch, and you want to eat with a knife and a fork. It's much easier to eat the boneless wings, right? But uh, the all-you-can-eat wings, it's boneless wings, 19.99 Mondays and Wednesdays for a limited time. I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, it sounds aight, but nah. I don't know. Uh, but uh, although, like I said, if it was bone-in wings, baby. Like, you could do like a 25-piece 
twenty four ninety nine. All you can eat bone in wings, and I will be there with bells on, and I will even watch baseball on TV. Well, we probably can't because they probably have Xfinity or Comcast. Doesn't matter. Uh, anyways, that's it. Uh, Vikings news dump. Hopefully, the Wolves won. Hmm. Uh, Listen to your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once put the work, what uh, put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.